Uh, so I'm a uh, Java developer, mainly Java for uh, CodeCentric and uh, the Netherlands. Um, so I would like to have a, a show of hands who's, who's like a pure developer here in the room. Okay, everybody, uh, almost everybody who is involved with testing or uh, like more into the quality uh, part. Only one hand. And who's writing unit tests? Okay, so why didn't you put up your hand before? I mean, if you're writing unit tests, you're involved in testing, right? Um, I'm going to give a, a talk about continuous delivery and especially testing in continuous delivery. Uh, why? Because I think testing is one of the most important aspects uh, to make continuous delivery work. Um, right now, I'm uh, involved in a project at a, um, a Dutch bank. It's uh, actually the, the biggest uh, IT employer in the Netherlands. And we're busy with continuous delivery and um, trying to get everything uh, very easy to production. Uh, but to do this, a lot of testing is needed and uh, to, to make sure that everything really works the way we expect it to be. So some, some typical points you as a either tester or developer will see. Um, I think you, you can recognize your, your, um, you have developed something and you hand it over to maybe the quality department if you don't have these integrated teams. and then people start to wonder, is this really the, the release 165 I'm testing now? Is there any problems there? Um, any problems maybe that we fixed before? And I see them appearing again. Hey, what's, what's going on here? And there's some points within continuous delivery that, uh, that will make this better. Um, and, and other points that, um, yeah, you'll really need testing to, uh, to, to uh, make it better. So, first a short introduction. Why why should we do uh, continuous delivery at all? I think um, a lot of companies and, and uh, development teams are doing agile already. Uh, but as you can see, there's a, a big cross in front of the release because what happens is a lot of teams, they work agile, they work in these iterations, and maybe they have this kind of shippable product, but it never really gets released to the um, uh, to the customer. And for me, that's uh, a bit like a car manufacturer who thinks about a new model. So they're developing this model. Maybe they got some input from the, from the customers. And they have this model, but then it's finished and they're, it's on the production line. But then they think, hmm, maybe uh, we need a better radio or a, a bigger engine. But instead of, so instead of uh, selling the car, Actually, they're going to think about this new car and then develop that one, maybe develop the next. But if you really bring it to the customer, then you can get their feedback. And maybe they weren't looking for a bigger engine, but a bit more room so they can get all their children on board. And that's, I think, one of the main aspects about continuous delivery, that you want to get your product uh, to the market and get the real feedback from it. What is continuous delivery then? Well, actually it's, it's often, uh, or it's, it's built around this pipeline and you can see uh, an image at the top, which uh, is like a really basic pipeline, goes to different stages and a lot of automation is involved. And um, important, you always have manual control. So the, the goal of uh, continuous delivery is to put something in production, but it doesn't mean you have to put every uh, every release cycle into production, but you always have the control to do so. Maybe go back to a different version or uh, go forward. And feedback is very important, which we'll see uh, later on. And eventually what we hope to reach is that we will become more predictable. So um, what we, we see now at uh, uh, the company I'm working for is that um, once we get it into production the first time, then we, we took all the major uh, burdens and then it becomes much more easy to just develop these increments and get those to production. Uh, we hope that quality will increase and that's mainly due to the testing and eventually the speed. Uh, so the time it takes to get something from development to production. Uh, the thing we're, uh, the, the goal we 
set ourselves is to um, we have a, a two week sprint so to develop something the first two weeks of the sprint and then the next sprint to put it into production and uh, that's quite ambitious but it it's something that should be uh, I think should be reachable I mean there, there's companies who have multiple releases every day to production so in that respect it's it's quite a uh, not even that ambitious goal. So if you look at the, the main steps, I think within continuous delivery, it's first you have to build your code. So as soon as you check it in, it's automatically built and you get this, um, this package that you can uh, reuse in different environments. And of course you want to have your unit test and maybe some other uh, parts within that compile phase. Uh, next phase is quality. Get more information about uh, how your code is looking maybe, if there's any uh, typical bugs in there. And then it, it shows here a separate test uh, phase, but actually if we'll see, we'll see later on that test is actually included within each and every step. Uh, then if, if we have tested and we think it's acceptable, we can go to one of the provision environments. So if you have a OTAP uh, street, then you can put it in testing maybe um, uh, or acceptance uh, phase, so even more uh, regression testing. And finally, we want to go to production. So there's two, um, uh, two principles behind continuous delivery. That's more, but I think in this respect, too, uh, very important. And the first is the push versus the pull model. So instead of uh, pushing code out and uh, pushing it to your testers or to other departments, um, they can ask for a version when it is available. And the second one is uh, stop the line. And that's all about the feedback. Get the feedback as soon as possible. And as soon as you have the feedback, do something uh, with it. So now really on to, to testing. If we look at the, the role of the tester in like the traditional type of projects, then it's a lot of development, development, development. And at some point, uh, it will be handed over to your testers and they do their job. I don't know, uh, probably some kind of functional testing, uh, exploratory testing. So this is all at the end. Uh, with continuous delivery, we want to get the feedback as soon as possible. We want to um, pull it forward. So uh, as the, the, the diagram shows, the, the closer you are to the commit, uh, the faster uh, you can have the feedback. And, and so uh, you need to take this into account. The, the previous speaker, I didn't see his full uh, presentation, but uh, talking about TDD. So, that's really linked to the commit stage. Um, and then of course we have other testing phases uh, for acceptance testing where you check whether the um, uh, functionality is really correct according to what the product owner asked for. Um, and the further to the back you go, uh, yeah, the, the, um, uh, also the more extensive the testing becomes. So if you look for example at this manual testing phase uh, manual testing is quite expensive. I mean, all the, um, the stuff before you can automate, but manual testing is something that, that people need to sit behind a computer or behind a website and need to click through and, and check out what's going on. So this is quite expensive. And so you want to include this step as uh, late as possible in the, the process, because if you find bugs here, then it will, um, it will take a long time before you can uh, implement them and get back again to this uh, stage. Um, very important is that every change results in, um, so every change you check in will result in the more or less this pipeline being executed. So as, as soon as you check in, you go through the commit stage and you get the feedback from your unit tests. If those go correctly, you go on to the next step and, uh, and, and for example, execute the acceptance testing. So also your 
trust in, in the application grows. The, um, the further you get into your pipeline, the more trust you have in your product that it's really working how you expect it. And um, yeah, that's something that you can really put into production. Um, very important is that the same, um, uh, yeah, we'll see later on that you'll have different environments for these, these stages. It's very important to keep those environments the, the same so that um, if you encounter, so that you, you cannot get into the situation where a bug is related, for example, to the operating system or to some other configuration, and um, it will show up too late. And if you're really unlucky, it will only show up in production. So try to deploy to uh, production-like environments. So in the, in the traditional model, uh, if we or if we apply like the traditional uh, way of testing to agile, then you would see that the more features you build, then the higher the, the cost becomes of testing because um, because you need to go through all these features again. So it just piles up, and you get more and more to test. So we need to change, and we need to start automating our tests. Otherwise, it won't become um, feasible to to keep this up. It will just grow too fast. So, and that's why you need, really need to ask yourself, so which parts are we going to test in which way? What, what's the most efficient way to test? And um, then what remains to be tested uh, manually? So I think the, um, uh, you can always ask yourself, how can I maybe automate this? And as soon as you uh, build, for example, if you're, Starting slowly up, you have just a small feature set. So also the automated testing you're writing, it's, it's also a, a small feature uh, or a small set, even more so for uh, unit testing. So as, as you let your acceptance testing on all the test, other testing grow, then it's uh, quite easy to just kick it off at some point in time and the, the overhead or the, the cost keep really low. But if you... Um, need to implement it later on, then it becomes more and more difficult. So even if you're starting with continuous delivery, don't expect to, um, to set everything up at once. Just start slowly, make sure that you have your unit tests in place, uh, start with acceptance testing and, and build it up slowly. And um, things that are overlooked often is that it's not only the application that we want to test, so, um, but we also need to test the middleware and the operating system because at some point we're going to deploy to production automatically. Uh, so we want to make sure that all the layers that we're building on, that they are correct also. So um, if you have configuration in your middleware, for example, your uh, application server or, if you're using, or your uh, web server, then make sure that you verify that the configuration is correct. Also on the operating system level, if maybe you have some uh, setting for the amount of files open or uh, maybe VM settings about the memory usage, then make sure those are correct and that you verify every uh, thing. And it can be simple checks. Maybe it's not as extensive as the, the, the checks you do on the application itself. But to get the confidence in your uh, application and the entire stack, it's really necessary to do so. And then it's even not limited to the application itself, but I think it's also necessary to test your, um, your pipeline itself, to test what the, the, um, like the deployment uh, scripts or other stuff you wrote. Also make sure you test those because like this robot, which is placing this window on the car, if, um, if you only check the car and see that the window is off like five uh, centimeters, it might not be um, due to the window or the car, but it might be that the robot has a different offset or something. So always make sure that also those uh, things are, are verified. I think... Um, Probably most people know this, this pyramid. So what it really shows you is the closer to the code uh, you are, the um, 
the more extensive the testing needs to be. And in, in this respect, really work together with your uh, tester or other quality team members to learn where the pitfalls are in your application and get that knowledge um, and maybe ask for input, for example, for writing the unit test. I know we had a situation where um, at the bank, if you, uh, for certain amounts, when they became too big, then uh, at some point in the system, you, you might get issues. And that was knowledge within the, the tester who was working already for the bank for five or 10 years or something. So that's really valuable knowledge to build upon. And uh, so we wrote, um, integration test for it and that really helped us to verify that those kind of issues don't show up. So really uh, learn from each other and um, another very good practice we're using is uh, if you're uh, observing a bug then write a test for it. Then it's the easiest way to uh, uh, make sure that the bug doesn't return and actually if you, I, I was having an interesting discussion. If you look at a, a bug, it's really uh, difficult to, um, uh, to tell how a bug will show up or what will go wrong. But as soon, if a, as, soon as a bug shows up, then you can often make like a kind of a true-false scenario out of it. So uh, whether the, the bug does show up or not. And then that brings you back to the testing because unit testing you're more or less writing this true false statements if this happens then it's okay but if that happens then it's false and then it's, it's like a kind of circle where um, a bug shows up but that's it might be difficult to um, to get a hold of a uh, hold of up front but as soon as you know what happens and you can uh, measure it then you can make it into a test so what's then the manual testing we're still actually doing? Uh, a lot of uh, show me testing. So that's the kind of test where, um, where we wrote some code and then uh, the tester wants to see, okay, let, show me what you have just built. And it gives them a better understanding of uh, what he needs to look at and where the pitfalls might be. Um, then it's exploratory testing and that's I, I always joke about it and call it just clicking around and see what happens. Um, those guys actually, my colleagues have a better, uh, well, I, they have a, uh, they, they know what they're doing. So actually it's, it's more about knowing where the pitfalls might be. And um, for example, check uh, uh, how an application responds if you click a, a reload button a couple of times. And then, of course, you have the user acceptance testing because you really want to sit down with your product owner and check what you have uh, built and whether it corresponds to his uh, requirements. And also there, we often see this pitfall that we think we know what they wanted, but for some reason, we're not close enough to the product owner or to the customer to really um, understand it and, and get the most out of it. Um, we have like the, uh, we, all, uh, uh, we always want to make it more beautiful and, and but sometimes that's not even necessary and very basic features or different features can have a much higher impact. So to, to show you some examples of how we solve certain uh, things. The first one is um, from a, a demo pipeline uh, we have set up at uh, Codecentric. So this is the basic architecture where we check in code into Git. Um, and once it's built, then the, the artifacts go to this uh, uh, storage. And that's quite important from a testing point of view because the artifacts are built once and only once. You always know that you're referring to the same version and you cannot get into the um, conflict that I showed before that um, that you don't know exactly which version you were testing and uh, so it's the, the confidence in, in that respect is much higher um, and from there on we can go to different uh, uh, different environments and to show it as 
uh, build steps. So first we have a commit phase, and as soon as we push something to Git, then a, a build starts running, and uh, the unit tests are executed, and we do some very basic uh, code analysis, and then uh, eventually uh, it's the, the a version is setting in Git, and uh, the war is, is put in this artifactory. Uh, next up, we go to uh, acceptance um, uh, stage where we provision this war file, and we do some, um, well, the acceptance test phase will do some uh, acceptance testing based on this. Um, here we're just using Selenium, so I don't know if most of you know Selenium. It's for browser, for website uh, testing. Um, and so in that way, we can click to a website and know whether the fields correctly show up and if you input a certain value that the, the output is uh, what we expect. Uh, then we have a performance test phase. So here we're using uh, JMeter, which is a load generator. And it will show us whether the performance degraded. So Maybe if someone did a, I don't know, quite stupid uh, um, solution which takes a lot of resources or a long time to respond, then this is really easy to show up. And this is already a phase where you need to uh, look at the results and maybe analyze them manually, but um, we have automated most of it, so a really big degradation in, um, uh, in performance will show up uh, already. And then we can go to a user acceptance environment where you really do the manual testing and uh, yeah, can decide based on that whether you want to release this version or not. So how does then, uh, th this is all, uh, we're using Jenkins as the, um, the basis of the pipeline and there's some nice um, uh, visualization tools so you can make these kind of uh, visualizations. And the n really nice thing about this is that, um, you know, for example, all the green blocks are the steps that went correctly. So it's just one overview. You can really get a lot of information. All the green blocks went correctly. The um, blue steps were not executed, which is actually the um, deployment to the production environment. And um, so there's like this manual action. I think it's trigger there, so you can actually um, manually start the deployment to production. And it also gives you the version that was deployed to which environment. And then looking more at uh, acceptance testing, you can get this information with uh, jbehave, and this will run the tests on a, pick on a lower level, like an API level. Um, where you can do all the input output and check whether the, the code itself uh, runs correctly. And I've got one more overview also about the performance testing. And here you see that, well, the blue line went down, so probably something good happened there. Someone made a, a good change, for example, and uh, the performance becomes much better. Um, so in this way, you can track all the versions and, and know how everything is performing and what is going wrong and not wrong. And as soon as you see something failing, then make sure it's communicated with the team and that it gets fixed as, as soon as possible. And this is a, a step really or something uh, that I mentioned about the, um, uh, the pull versus push about the, uh, for the continuous delivery process. And this is really helpful for your, um, for your tester or the one doing the regression checks because they can just pick a version and put it in an acceptance environment or a user acceptance environment and just do some, some checks with it. And um, they, they can, uh, what's really beneficial is that they can go back to a different version and see how it behaved. If they have the feeling uh, maybe this website is not going as, as smoothly as I thought that it was before, then they can always go to a version and check whether it's really uh, performing worse or that maybe uh, it's just their, their feeling. And um, 
So, yeah, really, uh, it's not only technical, but in, in, in testing also, yeah, this, this um, th your feeling is always important. Our website might look really great, but the way you're clicking through it, and that might, um, uh, might be, um, uh, yeah, it might be about how you preserve it instead of uh, all the technical numbers. So this is like um, more or less the environment we have uh, at our uh, at the current customer. It's more or less similar, but uh, depicted in a different way. So also here you see there's a commit stage and then going to um, acceptance stage, and from there on we can go to the different environments. Actually, there we have the DTAP suite. So first we have a development environment to do some quick testing and checking uh, whether the basic functionality works. And then we go to a test and uh, acceptance environment at the same time and run some um, uh, acceptance testing there. And what's actually quite nice is they um, th there was a previous uh, plugin for fitness, um, which is uh, fitness is a tool to, to do uh, behavior driven uh, development to, or even acceptance test-driven development, so first write your specification uh, and then you can write your code uh, according to it. And they made this um, uh, plugin that integrates fitness with uh, Selenium and that makes it really nice to easily test your, uh, your website. It's called Fitting, you can find it on GitHub and it's better than the, I think, than the um, uh, plugins there before. Well, what you see here is, uh, um, as a team, we have set up um, a regression set. So next to all the different uh, projects or applications, we um, uh, we have to to monitor and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, building. Then uh, we also have this regression test set. So as soon as we put something in production, that we can also run this regression set. And you can see that we have split it up for every environment. So uh, actually the, um, the tests below, you can uh, somehow nest them in fitness. So the actual tests below are uh, more or less the same, but depending on the environment, you have a different login scenario, for example. And we can drill down into one of the environments. And for example, for the acceptance environment, then we can get this overview of all the, uh, the tests that we are executing. And I've blanked out some things because I cannot give away much about the, the environment. Um, but you can see first the, the applications. And in this case, we only have one test per application because it's just regression testing. Uh, but otherwise, we might have more tests. And then if you run it, well, something failed here, but you can uh, quite quickly see whether it went okay or not. And so next to running this regression set automatically, we have also, uh, we can also use it um, manually. So it's, uh, it's run before we go to production, but we can do it manually also when, uh, when necessary. So some of the other tools you might use, um, I think everybody knows J, uh, JUnit. Uh, JMeter and the Grinder are tools to do uh, load testing. Uh, JBehave, Selenium, Fitness are more for the acceptance testing. Sonar will give you really a lot of information about the quality of your code. So that's really a recommendation. If you don't know it, then um, yeah, start, start using it and um, it will filter out these nasty little uh, bugs you might have. Why is Puppet here? Because I think it, um, Puppet is not so much testing, but if you use these kind of tools so that to set up your environment, then they will more or less, less make sure that your environment is set up every time, um, again, in the same, that, that it's the same setup. So it's a very nice tool to make sure that all the stack is complete and that it's set up in the same way every time. And 
don't underestimate the power of scripting because it's uh, if you really know what you're doing and writing scripts in a sensible way and of course you need to make sure they're maintain maintainable uh, but then scripting can be quite simple to do uh, small tasks and maybe do some verification of your uh, environment stuff like that so I think uh, you always need to uh, watch out that you're not overdoing it or that it it stays maintainable but then there's certainly uh, power in there and of course uh, don't forget the power of the cloud like Mirko already told us like a lot of tools available on the cloud that you can uh, really easy use for example um, there's uh, sauce labs which you can use to do this selenium uh, testing of your um, uh, website and um, the good thing is you can set up a lot of environments and different browser operating system uh, combinations that otherwise is really difficult to uh, to set up at the um, at the, the, the bank we have uh, we have one room full of all these computers that we're, uh, uh, that we're making use of and every computer has a different operating system and a different browser but I mean that's that's madness especially in a small company you don't want to maintain something like that so to go to the the highlights I think um, fast feedback is is very important if you want to uh, start or do continuous delivery because um, you want to know as soon as possible when something breaks and, and make sure it gets fixed as soon as possible. And dashboards really help in that respect. It, um, uh, you can, for example, even put up a big screen on your uh, department and as soon as something turns red, everybody knows that something is wrong and, and you can start fixing it. Of course, manual testing is still necessary, but I think if we work together as, as developers and testers and um, we can automate really a lot of stuff and this will uh, help us in the long run. So it might seem easier to do some manual testing while you're still starting, but um, like I showed the graph, it will become, um, it will become the, the cost will become too high to, uh, to maintain it. And then, yeah, really learn from each other. And I think that's, uh, that's maybe the most important uh, thing you can. There's a lot of knowledge between people and um, try to, to bring everybody close together. And you, next to continuous delivery, you even see now the whole DevOps culture starting up. So um, even operations people are becoming part of the team. And um, while it's difficult because they have a different uh, not mindset but they have a different goal their goal is stabi uh, stability instead of um, what we like to achieve uh, a lot of change so there's a clash but if you work together that can really help a lot okay well thank you for your time and uh, have a nice uh, <laughs>